Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and in today's video I'm going to be doing a quick video on why we need to use box frames and where we can just use a simple beam or post and beam. So I've modelled here three scenarios in SketchUp and these are pretty generic and you'd find these in most kind of house renovations. So moving forward to the simplest version and so this is where, say, someone wants to create a new opening in an existing wall. And where you can get away with using just a simple beam or even a lintel is when the opening's not exceeding around three meters. It depends on the load, but rough rule, three to three and a half meters opening, you can get away with just beam and you won't need to mess around with like steel posts or making any adjustments to the foundations. Where we need to sort of progress into using a column or a post underneath the beam is say in this example here, if this is the side of the house and this is the only bit of masonry that you've got left, this may not be enough to resist any wind load. So where, even though the vertical load from the wall or onto the beam isn't that high or they could potentially be not that high, you want the post there not just to provide vertical resistance, but also to restrain the external wall and resist any wind or lateral forces. You can see on the other side that I haven't put in the post in because there's plenty of wall left. If this opening was to get even bigger and you had the same scenario on the other side, then you'd probably want to put in another post. But that's when the problem comes, when the opening becomes so big and you're putting a huge reaction onto your existing foundations. And when you do these, you kind of want to minimize the amount of work you need to do on the foundations. So moving on to the third scenario, which is when you want to use this, what we call a box ring. So that means that we've got beam at the top to support the opening, two posts on either side, and also another beam on the bottom. And this beam is to spread the load onto the existing footing so that you don't need to mess around with increasing the size of the existing foundation. This is load dependent, but this is the general sort of arrangement. You do need to check your calculations and check the loads to make sure that the peak stresses underneath the post isn't exceeding what the existing footings are. But if the loads aren't too high, then this sort of bottom beam can spread the load so that it can so that it can spread it equally or minimize the load onto the existing foundation and in this scenario because you've essentially taken out a huge part of the existing wall this existing wall was probably a what we probably call a shear wall or providing lateral restraint to the house or building and you've essentially just taking a huge chunk of it out so this box ring is providing a lot of lateral stability to your structure so now I'm going to move on to how do we model and analyze this because it's not quite as simple as doing a hand calculation when you do a box ring you probably want to be using a bit of software but I've seen people model this sort of incorrectly so I'll try and show you the ways in which I will do it so I'm going to do this in Tech with Structural Designer, but you can do this in any other piece of software which you've got available to you. Okay, so we're in Tecla Structural Designer. Now I've created a really simple grid just to showcase different scenarios of the simple beam, beam and post, and then the box ring. I'll do two different types of box rings um, just to see the kind of different results you'll get based on the supports you put in. So feel free to skip ahead if you don't want to watch me actually model this or feel free and sit and watch it.
Okay, so I'm going to be applying a 30 kilonewton meter load, assuming that's what is going to be the same for every scenario. I'm just going to apply it to dead load for now, it doesn't really matter, this is just an example to see what the forces and the stresses look like based on you know, the same load. So we'll only be looking at the dead load load case, which is the load uh, case which I put the load in. And you can see here I've put pin supports at every position. I uh, need to rotate these columns so right in the major axis. Um, you can see I've only used a pin support on this box ring. I need to change this second box ring because it's a moment because it's exactly the same. And the way in which you actually want to do this is to split the beam into little segments and apply a spring. Now, how do you determine the spring stiffness? Well, I'll get onto that later. Let me just split this beam up into little segments first. Um, not too familiar with Tech Structural Designer, but I don't know if there's a better way of doing this, but this is the kind of way I know how to do it. So just bear with me. So what I've done here is made sure that this beam, even though we're split into segments, that it's actually a continuous beam. And these ends are definitely going to be fixed to the column. What I need to do now is to add supports to all of these loads because we're simulating the beam as being on the existing foundation. But obviously this support is incorrect. This is a fixed support and this is a pin support. What I actually need to do is change this to a spring support. Yeah, I remember now. So it's fixed. Three and So how do you determine the actual spring stiffness? Well, if we say the existing load on the foundation was 50 kilonewtons per meter. Now for normal foundation design, say you were given a bearing pressure from a geotechnical port, the bearing pressure would allow for some displacement and normally the allowance is around 20 millimeters. So if you did the spring stiffness calculation, which is the force over displacement, if you did 50 kilonewtons per meter over 20 millimeters, you're going to get a spring stiffness of 2,500. So that should now be a spring. And I need to do the same for all of these. Hopefully, this model should run now, and we should be able to see the different types of forces which is being produced here. I didn't say this earlier, but this, these beams in a box ring, they don't have to be fixed, but generally, if you're creating a box ring, they probably should be fixed as they're providing stability to the wall. Let's see if I get any errors. If it's all right. How do I check if it's all right? Well, I just have a look at the flexions quickly. 
Challenges. Values. See, those values look alright. When I say alright, I don't mean the values themselves. I'm not getting displacements of like 10 million or something like that, which, which indicate that something is terribly wrong with the model. These values are small. The model probably is okay. So that's the deflection. So what we're really interested in is actually the bending moments and the shear forces. So let's just have a quick look. Let's have a look at major. So that is behaving as we'd expect. So simple beam, simply supported beam, say beam on two pass lanes either side, that's the bending moment we'd expect, UDL. And the same instance with a beam, simply supported beam on two posts. We're not necessarily providing a moment frame or anything, although you could. So this bending moment shape is, you know, it's correct. And as you'd expect, the values are also the same. In this instance, with the box frame, with the two supports on underneath the columns, you can see that we've got moments at either end of the beam and also moments into the column and also a uniform moment in the bottom beam. Where this differs is where we've got the spring and this is because of how the springs are behaving. But what we want to look at is also, let's just have a look, quick look at the shear force. So it behaves quite differently if you model it with springs at intermediate sections of the bottom beam. So which is actually more accurate? Well, it's hard to say from just looking at the shear force and bending moment diagrams. But if we have a look at the beam end reactions, which is ultimately what we're trying to achieve is to make sure that we're spreading the load so that it's not peaking at the ends or the bottoms of the column. So if we have a look at the reaction forces, which is here, I think. Okay, so if we have a look at the reaction forces, just the vertical reactions between these two different types of box frames. So if we ignore the first two scenarios with the beam and the beam and the post, just, just looking at the box frames. So I've seen people model the box frame with just a pin support underneath the columns. And you can see that the reaction forces are exactly the same as the beam and the post. So is that bottom beam actually doing anything if you've modeled it like this? In essence, no, it's not really achieving what you want. You've, if you've analyzed it like this and you are trying to get them to build this on site, they would need to provide or build bigger foundations, pad foundations, so that they can deal with this kind of highly localized force underneath the column. By modeling it like this, by putting spring stiffness and putting intermediate supports underneath the bottom beam, you are spreading the load further. So you're not putting a peak force. So in this case, you've got 75 kilonewtons on one end, but when you've put a spring stiffness, the end, the reaction underneath the columns has reduced to 34, 35 kilonewtons, which is a significant drop. And you can see that it's fairly uniform when you've got the spring steppers and intermediate supports, which is exactly what you're trying to achieve by using the box ring. So in my opinion, this is actually the correct way in how you model a box ring. And you can clearly see why you need it in order to not deal with having to modify the existing foundations this becomes a very, very attractive solution for contractors and clients if they want a really big opening. Now, there are ways in which, or in some instances where the opening is so big that you still have really high forces underneath the columns. And what you need to do is just to play around with the model and essentially make the structure stiffer so that it can spread the load further. 
hopefully you won't run into too many scenarios like that because they can be quite challenging. And in most instances where you are using a box ring, you shouldn't really have that problem. There are occasions where people you know, want some crazy stuff happening in their existing house or they want to build something really crazy. So there are instances where that does happen, but generally you probably won't really run into that problem. And this is just to show you how you can model springs in Tecla and how you do a simple sort of 2D frame. And just to see how it actually behaves and why putting just simple supports on the ends of columns is not the right solution. Now there is more to it to designing it, but I might save that for another video because this is my first time kind of talking over as I'm showing demonstrating something. So I'm a bit conscious that this video is taking too long. So in another video, I might show you how you actually design it. But in essence, in short, how you design it, is you just go through the forces, bending moment, deflection, shear forces, reactions, check that everything is within the limit of the section size that you're choosing. Generally, box frames will be UCs, but depending on what they're supporting, you could be using UVs. But generally, you want the structure to be pretty stiff uniformly um, so you're not getting some really weird interactions also when you're designing this properly you need to remember to factor in some wind loading if they you know if you're putting this box ring and it's supporting the wind loads you know it's become a racking system or you know, restraint lateral force system so you need to remember to put some lateral wind loads on the model and that can sway the results in, in a kind of different way so you need to make sure that you check all the different combinations but in short that's kind of what you have to do and hopefully this video has been helpful and hopefully i haven't dragged this on for too long and i've kind of hopefully i've explained this clearly if not please feel free to drop me a comment below um, please remember to like and subscribe and i'll catch you on the next video cheers